Welcome to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast with Dat Boy Mo 629 Discussing everything fitness and everything motivation. Here is where you will get your fitness education and motivational fix. Now, here's your host, Dat Boy Mo 629 What's good, everybody? It's that boy, Mo629, coming to y'all in another edition of the Starter on and Finish It podcast. This time, we're about to talk about Mr. Never Give Up. Mr. Leader of the Scene Nation. That boy, John Cena, right? So, why do I want to incorporate John Cena into this episode of my podcast? Basically, the starter on and finish it motto is basically going after and just connecting with people and celebrities and influencers that have applied the starter on and finish it mentality to their life. And if I could be transparent with everybody, John Cena is the epitome of that, right? Think about where John Cena came from. You know, John Cena is one of the most popular celebrities in this day and age right now, right? From his humble beginnings, apparently he was a limousine driver slash bodybuilder until, you know, he became interested in professional wrestling, until he was in professional wrestling and basically took over and became the face of WWE, where he was a part of and currently is a part of. And he went into the acting realm, right? So we, we're we going to touch base and we're going to touch on everything that John Cena has done. And I, I want to communicate to my audience out here as far as like the approach of starting on and finish it, right? I want to focus more on the slogan, the motto and the lifestyle people can live, right? With the started on and finish it mantra and given examples of people who have applied that to their life, right? I'm not even saying, hell, start on the finish, it wasn't even around when John Cena got into the game, but it's a prime example of applying this to your life, this model to your life, how he, how I can connect on how John Cena applied start on and finish it to his life and bring it to this platform, you know, my podcast platform. So at the end of the day, that's that's what I want to touch up on, right? So the John Cena journey, right, is the epitome of starting on and finish it when you think about it, right? From the moment he stepped into a WWE ring, during the ruthless aggression era, which was after the attitude era, um, which was one of the most popular eras in WWE. And right, John Cena made a commitment to start strong. Right? John Cena stepped up into the game. He was in a organization called UWF. I remember seeing him as the prototype. That was his. Uh, that was his gimmick. The proto. The prototype, right? He was like a robotic type character. The prototype, and um, he went from the UWF. I believe he went to. I know he went from UWF and went to WWE, right? So when John Cena first came into WWE, he was. He's kind of like. He kind of like what he is now, but I'll, I'll 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 make the comparison. So John Cena used to have different color trunks and different color boots or whatever, right? Just just multitude of colors that he wore. He wore shorts, he wore boots, and that was pretty much it, right? So he pretty much plain. And he made a name for himself by answering the challenge of Kurt Angle, right? Of Kurt Angle. He made the challenge, and he took Kurt Angle to the limit. Basically, okay, John Cena just made a name for himself, right? And uh, he was like, who the hell you think you are? He's like, my name is John Cena, and I have ruthless aggression or whatever the hell he just said. It was funny. But he made a name for himself. So that's the start of John Cena, right, to kind of put it in there. So John Cena made a commitment to starting strong, right? So he just didn't enter the ring. He owned every moment, which is another part of the starter own it, finish it mantra, right? So his ability to own his character, his matches, and his place in WWE history is what set him apart as a true superstar. John Cena was the face of WWE for a decade plus more. All the superstars that came in WWE, John Cena was that dude, right? 
So, as far as the John Cena finish it mentality, right? He continuously pushed the boundary of what it meant to be a WWE icon and continue to this day in Hollywood, right? To become being a Hollywood heavyweight, whether, right? And whether it's in the, 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 the WWE ring or the silver screen, John Cena's determination to finish what he started at the highest level is what makes him a global phenomenon and is why I'm doing this episode in respect to John Cena pretty much, right? So in this episode, we're basically going to explore how John Cena's career perfectly aligned with the started on and finish it philosophy, right? From his relentless work ethic, and basically how you can apply. I'm not saying you got to be John Cena, but in your life, what dream goals, whatever you have, right? So his relentless work ethic to his unyielding commitment to his craft, right? John Cena is a living testament to the power of perseverance and dedication, right? He started it with a dream. He owned every challenge that came his way and finished each chapter of his career with unmatched success. So, John Cena, as we delve into John Cena's stardom, right, we think about how, I want to think about how, he exemplified, started, on it, finished it with his transition to the WWE, right? He brought his A-game, and he finished multiple successful movies. He got Peacemaker out there. If you ain't seen Peacemaker, it's on HBO Max. Peacemaker, right? So it's a character off Suicide Squad. And John Cena, he got these weird-ass characters, right? And uh, that's the thing about John Cena. He's so clean-cut on WWE in the WWE ring, but when you see him act man this dude is crude and vulgar and just nasty i think he had a sex scene in uh peacemaker walking around this draw and stuff but yeah it, it's the complete opposite of john cena the wwe character mr never give up mr make a wish mr you know just being PG. He the king of the PG era, and then when he gets in Hollywood, he's like R-rated as hell. Even that uh that movie Vacation Friends, that's crazy. And um uh, Ricky Sinicky, that's a crazy movie. Ricky Sinicky, crazy. You ain't seen that one? Yeah, you got to see that one with uh, Zach Efron. But a little bit of backstory on John Cena, right? John Cena was born in 1977. He's a he's a he's a he's a Massachusetts boy. So you know New England Patriots, Boston Celtics, all them. You know what I'm saying? So. And before he even became, like, a WWE superstar, homeboy was a, a bodybuilder. He wanted to be a bodybuilder. That didn't really work out. I'm kind of glad it didn't really work out because, hell, he'd probably be dead by now. All the roids and stuff like that. But, um, so I'm kind of glad that part didn't work out. He dealt, he dived into professional wrestling. He's a 16, a former 16-time world champion, right? So he tied, basically tied it with Ric Flair, and I guess there's some kind of banner back and forth on whether he should break the Honestly, I think he should break the record, be honest with you, because, I mean, he got one more run in WWE. He's retiring officially in 2025 from WWE. And uh, I think, I, I believe it'd be cool, but I don't think they'll do it, Ed, but he should. They should. And that's one of the things, too, like, I like about AEW. They'll take the belt off you and put it on somebody else in a heartbeat. Like WWE is strategic and you kind of like just waiting it out. But I think they should take that belt, at least maybe uh, the World Heavyweight Championship from, uh, I won't say Gunther, but maybe Cody Rhodes. And, 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 and they ain't going to do it for him. They might, they might do it from Gunther. But, uh, and give him one more reign. That'd be cool. But... One of the, some of the things like backstory with John Cena. John Cena, from what I remember, right? As a as a professional, I am a professional wrestling fan. Yes, I am. So at the end of the day, shut up about it. If you got something to say, but I'm a professional wrestling fan. And John Cena, when he came up, he came up with uh, he feuded with Brock Lesnar, and he had this thugonomic word life thugonomic. John Cena used to freestyle. He used to battle rap people and all that stuff too. He came out with an album. I think that mother went platinum. He came. And John Cena came out with an album, a platinum album. And to this day, right, your time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. My time is now. 
Come on, man. And then he can't see me. He said he got that from Tony Yayo, right? From Tony Yayo. From Massachusetts. The thing about John Cena, too, is that my, John Cena, I think, had the rapper gimmick. Came from looking like Mark Wahlberg. Like, so he looked like Mark, Mark Wahlberg. And... If you don't know, Mark Wahlberg used to be a rapper called Marky Mark. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch and stuff like that. So the way Mark Wahlberg used to walk around with his shirt off and he used to have his draw showing and the pants hanging and stuff like that. So I think John Cena kind of like embodied that a little bit in his persona as a rapper. So he came out with like word life and all that stuff. And at first it was a joke gimmick. He had his uh, sidekick. I forgot what his name was, but it was Bull Boo Cannon, and it was uh, it was sidekick, and he it was a joke. People was laughing at him and all that stuff, and then when he started laying freestyles on people, it became serious, right? Now people, a lot of people probably don't even know this, but the F U, the attitude adjustment, right? The attitude adjustment finishing move was called the F U as a spinoff from Brock Lesnar's F5 because he was feuding with Brock Lesnar and basically he was the anti-Brock. He was, man, he hated Brock, dog, back in the day. So, and people hated Cena because he hated Brock. So at the end of the day, he said F you as a knockoff to the F5. So, boom. Oh, that was pretty cool back then. So as I'm thinking about it right now, how he kind of like transitioned his character and elevated his character. Uh, Cena also... Right is 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 uh, as the title of this podcast is called the man who never gave up. Uh, one of his catchphrases is hustle, loyalty, respect. Um, he also is believe it or not, this guy is a workhorse. You know, he got over he granted over six hundred and fifty Make a Wish Foundation wishes. Right, more than any other celebrity ever had. Right, I don't even think that'll be broken unless you got like somebody out there that do. I don't even know how he did it, but he did it. So, um, one of his first movies, right, was, and this is kind of like a spinoff, because The Miz, I, I believe The Miz was supposed to be like the Hollywood star coming out, you know, of the WWE. Like, but then John Cena did The Marine, and then he did other movies, did that Bumblebee, and then he became part of the Fast and the Furious saga as a Vin, Vin Diesel's brother and stuff like that. So he he's elevating more more serious leading roles in Hollywood, right? And uh, his, his accolades just go on and on and on. Like if you really think about John Cena, like what what he accomplished, and a man is only he's only like what was he forty seven? He ain't even hit fifty yet. So John Cena got a lot more to accomplish in his life, and it's just like man, this dude he just. He just continued on and on and on. So one of the things I do want to talk about with John Cena is that, like, some of his quotes, right? So he t- he, pr- he pretty much take pe- he t- what life gives him, the lemons, and turns it into lemonade and whatever flavor he wants to make that lemonade. Because, like, one of the things he always say, and when he comes out, to the ring, he got this towel, right? And they always says, never give up. So his favorite slogan is never give up, right? And that's kind of like what in line with started on and finish it, even though I'm not saying never give up. Basically, whatever you start, you have to own it. You have to finish it. So in essence, you're never giving up. Another one is hustle, loyalty, and respect. He really like, you know what I'm saying? It's also about, you know, respect and loyalty and hustle. At the end of the day, grind, be loyal. You know what I'm saying? And res- hell, respect the crap, right? And then, like, one of the things, like, he also said, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then they become aggressive, right? So that uh, that that that's a good quote to live by. Obviously, you can't see me, Right? He always talk about stay true to himself and be loyal to those who are loyal to you and respect everyone, even your enemies in competition, right? At the end of the day, respect everybody. That makes sense. Because if you don't respect your enemies in your competition, you take them from granted, guess what? You know what I'm saying? You're going to more than likely lose. That's why underdog stories happen. Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thought Mike Tyson was going to win. Because he ain't respect Buster Douglas. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, you know what I'm saying? 
He ain't respect Buster Douglas. He ain't think Buster Douglas had a chance. He's like, I'm just go up in there, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even in shape. I'm just do what I want to do. And yada, 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 yada. No, that ain't how that happened. So, and one of the things, like, I, I, I want to touch on, a couple of things, actually, is John Cena, I don't really want to talk too much about his personal life, but his personal life is basically how he lives a professional life. He likes to live it private. And John Cena is married right now. And he was just, I, I think, one of the clips, there was a heavy clip on the sh- uh, Club Shay Shay, the Shannon Sharp show about him not wanting kids and the responsibility and dedication that it takes to be a parent in today's world. And he said, he, basically, he didn't want that responsibility. He stayed true to himself. He's 40, 40, over 45 years old. Basically, the ship has, the ship has sailed for him. And then the woman that he's with, she understands that. She understand, like, man, he don't want kids, I don't want kids. We just want to be together, live our happily married life, and move on. And I respect that. John Cena has always been clear-cut about that. When he was with Nikki Bella, he was clear-cut about that. He said he will get married, but he for sure did not want no kids. So that probably why they broke up, because he stood true to himself. And that a lot of... Realness coming from John, I believe that people should stay true to themselves. You see what I'm saying? Like, you really should stay true to yourself because at the end of the day, if you don't, you're going to end up living in, like you said, you're going to live in regret, right? Stay true to yourself, right? You're going to marry somebody you don't want to marry. You're going to be with somebody you want to be by or uh, uh, be with. You're going to have kids with somebody you want to have kids with. So if you stay true to yourself at the end of the day, you may hurt some feelings, but you're not going to live in regret. You're not going to die in regret. You stay true to yourself, right? So that's what I take from that right there. And like John Cena, as far as like why John Cena got into acting, that's another thing I really want to take in. You know what I'm saying? John Cena was so successful in WWE. It's like, why would you want to get into acting? I think every entertainer's goal, whether you sing, whether you rap, whether you dance, whether you play instruments, whether you're a basketball player, football player, whether you're a soccer player, whether you're a professional wrestler, whatever it is, bodybuilder, Eventually, one of the end goals of an entertainer is to dabble in acting. Think about it. You had Ice Cube dabbling in acting. I mean, he's an actor. Will Smith, Jamie Foxx, comedian. You got Martin Lawrence. You got all these people that dabbled in acting, that went into acting. The goal, think about it. John Cena. You had Hulk Hogan. You got Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You got Dave Bautista. A lot of uh a lot of professional wrestlers, Roddy Roddy Piper, Sting, you know, trying to go into acting. Even uh, now, Jade Cargill in WWE, she said her main goal was to get into acting. And she think that WWE would be the best place to propel her into that industry. So, John Cena, like, and he always been driven by a desire to push himself, right, and try new things. So I, after achieving incredible success in WWE, he sought out new challenges. And new challenges is, you know, acting. And acting allow him to explore different facets of his personality. As we as I said earlier, he's very vulgar now. And also talent that weren't wasn't fully utilized in wrestling. So he's not in WWE saying he wanna I ain't even gonna say the vocal stuff that he said, but he's been saying a lot of you know vocal stuff, and also the longevity of acting. You gotta think like WWE is hard on your body. Professional wrestling is hard on your body. Even though ooh, it's fake, it's scripted. It's very hard on your body. A lot of if you ever went to one of these autograph signings with old school wrestlers, you see exactly how professional wrestling beats down your body. A lot of these guys didn't even make it past forty or fifty. Or 60. Ultimate Warrior, he died at 54. Ravishing Rick Rude, I believe he died at 40. Uh, Owen Hart, he died in the wrestling ring. He was only 33 years old. You got to think of all these wrestlers that passed away at a very, fairly young age. Eddie Guerrero didn't even make it to 40. You know what I'm saying? Because of his heart condition and stuff like that. Brian Pillman didn't even make it to 40. You got a lot of wrestlers out here. Look at the Von Erics. The Von Eric kids, professional wrestling. I believe they suffered from CTE 
and they had a genetic condition and what 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 well, they are just uh that family only one still alive is Kevin out of the brothers and that's just insane to me. Just insane. So one of the, and, and and thing is too about John Cena like as longevity is less wear and tear on the body, the toll it takes on the body. Um the toll that it takes on the body and transition acting provided Cena with an avenue to sustain his career in the entertainment industry well beyond his wrestling years, which holds true. Same goes toward the rock. I'll talk about the rock a little later. So and also helped John Cena with his own personal growth, right? So like Cena has mentioned in many interviews that he enjoyed the creative process of acting and the opportunity gives him to collaborate with different people in variety of project like so acting provided him with new ways to express himself creatively and further fueling his passion for the crap. If you look at John Cena, you talk to John Cena, John Cena is in there. He in there. He giving acting his all, which takes me to The Rock. The Rock was doing this before John Cena. So when John, when The Rock would leave for Hollywood and come back to WWE, leave for Hollywood, come back to WWE, though John Cena at first did not like that. He felt that The Rock was choosing Hollywood over his passion for professional wrestling. So, and John Cena will actually go out and make comments disparaging The Rock about this. Talking about if you're going to do this, you got to do this 100%. When I do it, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to be a full-time wrestler. I'm not doing what you're doing, right? So he publicly criticized The Rock, right, in the past, you know, for leaving WWE to pursue a career in Hollywood. But the thing about The Rock was, and The Rock was vocal about this. I remember The Rock saying this, too. He said he what he wanted to do was separate himself from WWE and Hollywood. That's why when he went to Hollywood, he wasn't The Rock. He was Dwayne Johnson. He wanted to make a name for himself as Dwayne Johnson in Hollywood until he got enough clout to bring that back into WWE. So basically, I'm the new guy. I don't own Hollywood. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to make a name out here first, get some clout. Then I'm going to come back to WWE with my clout own The Rock, be The Rock again, take The Rock to Hollywood, and now I can be who I want to be in Hollywood, which is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's exactly what he did. So, being on the outside looking in, John Cena, like a lot of us, didn't really understand that. So, they had some, I guess, you know, they feuded. They had two matches at WrestleMania and stuff like that. They actually had a legitimate feud with each other until they kind of like buried the hatch. Like, John Cena didn't understand what The Rock was really going through and doing. So, when The Rock came back and John Cena actually realized, man, I gotta take time away from WWE because this is Hollywood life is grinding. So, now he understood. It's kind of like, okay, walk a mile in my shoes and then you can tell me, tell me what's up. So they got a mutual respect right now. They kind of they buried the hatchet, so they cool right now. The Rock, The Rock, and The Rock, and John Cena, they on the same wavelength. You know what I'm saying? To me, I believe honestly, if you ask me, I think even though I think The Rock is yeah, The Rock is worth more, but I think Batista is the better actor out of all of them. But as far as I, I'll talk about Batista in a future episode too. But John Cena and The Rock. They're pretty much in the same wavelength at being the face of the company, being world champion, being huge stars, and being in Hollywood right now. So, so basically, you know, John Cena has went into acting, started it, owned it, and he's finishing it as well. So that's just that's just my take on that. So I just basically, as I wrap this up, that's why I did this podcast, just to show you guys that you you got to start. 
You got to start, and then whatever you start, you got to you can make the adjustments along the way. When John Cena started, he wouldn't have been who he was if he stayed in the trunks and had the gimmick when he first started. Same with The Rock, right? If he stayed as Rocky Maivia, he would not have been The Rock. You have to adapt. John Cena adapted. He saw a change. He owned it. Then as he owned it, he finished it. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, John Cena, and I'll wrap this up. Remember, John Cena's journey is a powerful example of what it means to start it, own it, and finish it, right? So no matter what the challenges are, the challenges are, He's shown us the importance of starting strong on it every moment and finishing with unwavering determination. The boy, man, the boy killing it out here. That's all I can say. The boy is killing it. And with anything in life, you have to adapt. You have to evolve. You have to, with the times, Move forward with the time because if you stay in your little box, your comfort zone, you're not going to be able to break free, break out, expand at all. You're going to be in that box, right? So for this podcast episode, if you're listening for as far as the start it, own it, finish it mantra, start it, own it, finish it slogan, the motto with that boy, most of the nine H1 warrior, how you can apply it to your life, whatever you're doing. Whether you're going to school, whether you start a new job, whether you starting a, a, a YouTube channel or you starting a podcast like myself, like okay, my podcast been here for five years, right? I started it, I semi owned it, I didn't own it, I don't own it fully. You see what I'm saying? Life's up and down. So that's what I got to get better at. But you see that I'm still I'm still running with the podcast. Started on the finish the podcast, right? So I'm still running with the podcast. So whether you got your podcast, YouTube channel, Instagram page, Facebook page, e-commerce store, whatever you whatever you're trying to pursue in your life, right? So as we enter the pearly gates one of these days, you know, our life come to a close, right? We don't end it with regret. That's why I have that own it in there. When you see my shirt and it says start it, own it, then finish it, right? That own it is in red because that's the important part. Because even if life takes you suddenly, like it did my brother, like if it takes it suddenly, you're still, you're still owning it. So you can go to sleep or be in your deathbed or whatever it is. At least have some solace as you're transitioning or if it's just sudden that mm, that you owned it. You see what I'm saying? Like you owned it. And that, that's, me, that's me talking to the audience right here. I'm just being real with you. At the end of the day, that's just me being real with you one-on-one. This is how I talk to people on a daily basis who talk to me. That's just me being real with you. So I want to use this platform to kind of communicate with y'all. Like, if anybody out there listening to this whole damn podcast, go ahead, listen to it. All right, listen to it. Get some motivation out of this. I really enjoyed this episode, talking about John Cena right here. So I hope y'all enjoyed this episode, too. So until next time, you know what it is. Start it, own it, finish it. You've been listening to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. Be sure to subscribe to receive new episodes. Link up with DatboyMo629 on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Or visit him at aceonewarrior.com. Until next time, start it, own it, finish it.